Hello, my name is Jocelyn Morn and I'm going to talk to you today about figure drawing and in particular the drawing of a, a fairly highly finished figure drawing as we proceed through the lesson. Well, just a very brief explanation of the materials I use because they are very important to me. I like to use a graphite crayon, which I have just broken. As you see there, it was about that long. I broke it in half into two pieces, and when it's nicely worn, a little rounded, it makes very nice broad areas of tone. You could almost paint with it, and that helps to keep your work very simple. This is a 3mm 6B pencil. It's a clutch pencil. Your leads come in and out, as you see, like so. And that is very nice, giving you nice, strong darks. If you do want some very fine work, I have a 2B pencil with a 0.7 lead in it. And that's very nice for fine cross-hatching. I also have a putty rubber, which you can actually wipe out lights with, as you can see there. So that's quite useful as well. And that's it. That's my gear. Now, in this case, I'll use this 0.3mm uh, lead. And I'll just show you the basic structure of this figure. There's the spine. We've got a, the pelvis turning away from us. Out of this part of the pelvis, we've got this leg coming this way and the other leg over there with the foot because we're looking above him. That foot is a little higher than this one. And the shoulders are rolling right over. So this shoulder is pulled right round like so. And the arm foreshortened away from us and going right over underneath the other arm onto the top of that other leg. This be the spine becomes the neck and that becomes the shape and structure of the head, a very simple volume of the head. The other shoulder is hidden behind the head, but we know that that is part of that arm, there's the elbow, and there it is coming down over to the hand. So that is your structure. Your neck would come to the front here, where the front of the collarbones meet at the front here, and the sternum or breastbone would be over almost in silhouette. Here is our rib cage through there, so we're seeing the actual twist of that, we're seeing the whole side of the rib cage actually in that position there. And the shoulder comes in front of that. We could actually then rub that shading out. And there would be the column or volume of the arm coming forward in front like so. And the foreshortened arm going away like a series of cylinders. And it's important that we understand what goes on underneath the body. Here is the pelvic area here and it's tipping like so. Here's our centre line coming down through to the pubic area like that. And out of the side of the pelvic area, we have the column of the upper part of the leg, which is basically a large cylinder, through to our kneecap. Here is the lower leg, again a tapered cylinder coming down to our ankle here. Look, it is just so simple. If you can keep it simple like this, it'll be much easier for you. Here is the foot, it's basically a wedge. Tone on one side, light on the top. You can rub that out later on. Here is the other leg, a nice big column again, coming forward to the knee. And again, see how I draw these ellipses? And I'm just basically keeping them to very, very simple shapes like so. And there we have a, a, the structure of the framework of the body. Just a few little, little minor adjustments, and I'll just tip that head a little bit forward, which might mean I will just rub a little bit off the top. It's not a bad idea to do that recheck, just to see that things are in the right position. Bring that ear forward. It's very important that you do that. Too many people just take the first thing they put down, and you might be lucky, you might not be. But just that little bit of a readjustment is a good idea. So that's pretty right now. Okay, now we're going to need to get a little break because our model's going to need to put his duds on, not for any moral reasons, but I was asked to explain drapery as well, and I think that's a lovely way of doing it because I can have the top part nude and I can have the lower part clothed. Right, we'll now work on the major work. As you see, we have locked it in very lightly, and we will now proceed with our graphite crayon to block in some of the major tonal areas which will help to tell us where the form is turning away from the light and turning away from us. So there's the back of the figure and there's a very nice plane down there. And we've now clothed him so we will also be looking at drapery as we're doing this, drapery folds. So I'll be blocking those in at the same time. But just very lightly with this tone just blocking in the side where the light is turning away and the form is darker and that will help to give us volume. Okay, and it's just very, very simply at the moment in the broadest possible way. And tone under there. Bit of a cast shadow under there. 
as you can see it already starting to look rather chiseled okay down the plane of the underside of the wrist there you see it touching the top there and the turning away of the head now this medium is fairly clumsy in some ways but because it is it makes you work very broadly which is I think very good at this stage right now I'll use my 6B pencil and I'll work on some of the more subtle planes and I'll probably use some shading to build those up or I might just use the side of the pencil to get the say the underside of that arm there and the turning form there the a little bit more detail on the turning of that arm there, the way this tucks under and that comes over it and we start to get that movement of the wrist. Just dropping over that leg there. Uh, I'll just be a bit more detailed on these folds. I'll just explain them a little bit more as they turn and twist and go over that leg there. You see they're actually rolling over the leg there. Lovely volume there. Okay, um, and quite strong pieces. As you work with this pencil it starts to form its own little chisel in a small way. It's like a miniature piece of the of the larger crayon and it's also a 6B so it's nice and strong and dark. Okay. And there's a nice ellipse around the cuff there. As you can see I hold the pencil on the side and I use my whole arm. At this stage I don't draw with fine detail. I will shortly and I will change the way I hold the pencil when I do the finer detail. The side of the foot is necessary there. And it's lovely the way the folds come over the tightness of that knee there. There's a lovely swinging fold right through to there. As, as I've got the basic structure of the body underneath I'm no longer worried as to whether it's all going to fit together. I know that it will fit together because I've constructed it in the nude first. And uh, you can't undress every model you draw. You might be drawing on the train, for example. I do a lot of drawing on the train, so you can't undress them all, but you can mentally undress them. It's great fun. So, uh, <laughs> oh, it's a nice little folds there. And it is necessary, because that way you, you know what's happening underneath. All right. Don't be frightened to use your putty rubber. There's nothing wrong with using a rubber. It's a very useful piece of equipment. Nothing wrong with shading. When we were art students, we were almost told that shading was a dirty word. We wondered why. But it's the only way, often, that you can get tone and works very well. Okay. And some lovely ellipses as they follow around the form. You can get those turning forms by watching where the folds are going to and where they're coming from. Center line there over the crutch. Lovely twist there. And his tummy actually overlaps his trousers there. He's got a little bit of middle-aged spread there, very naughty. And that will just give you a lovely plane there. That's great. And of course the waistband of the belt is pulling it in a little bit, which is rather lovely. And I think you need to concentrate on those little accidents of nature when a piece of clothing pulls in the flesh. Or like that little tab on the trousers gives you a lovely piece of elliptical drawing, a little bit of detail that gives you a nice piece of fun. Another piece of detail that you can use is the seam on the jeans. Lovely the way it follows around. It actually helps the form because it follows around the volume so beautifully like that and it gives you such a lovely piece of information on what is happening there. Now, there again, lovely the pocket at the back. Again, even the way the pocket follows around the forms. Lovely. And that all helps to give you information on what is happening. I grab onto anything. In fact, I rather like drawing the clothes figure because it does give you such a lovely bit of information on what's happening there. You might need a little bit of tone there because otherwise he looks as if he's sitting in the middle of nothing and he in fact is sitting on a box. So we'll just indicate that very lightly there. Okay, let's come back to the upper part of the body and I'll, again, I'm probably working a bit over arm and getting in the way of the camera here. Uh, but uh, I, I often twist myself almost as if the piece of paper is so three-dimensional that I have to move my body to get round it. So solid does the drawing appear to me. It is not a piece of flat paper. It's the real thing to me, and I enjoy that three-dimensionality of it. I like to feel that the figure is a whole series of volumes like hills that are pushing one in front of another. And you can see there the way I shade with little overlapping strokes like that. That helps to build your shading and build your tone up. There you are. And you can actually caress the form. It's like stroking the form. 
Okay, that's building that up, as you can see there, and building that volume up there beautifully around that shoulder there. You can see how those strokes actually help to, to build your form. Here I'm going to take them right down under the ribs there, and I'm actually going to twist the strokes so that they belong and flow round underneath the form. Have a look at Michelangelo's work, and you'll see how his strokes actually caress the form. They follow the form, and it's a great help there. Okay, so now, detail is good so long as you keep in mind the overall thing that you started with. I think where people are frightened of doing detail is because they lose the plot. It's very easy to lose the plot. I lose it myself many a time. And you forget to look at the overall thrust and movement of the body and see just what it really is doing. So you've got to keep your eye on that all the time. And, and quite often stand back or sit back and look at your drawing and see that you haven't lost what you started off to do. Okay, now come back up to the head. A little more detail around there. Very soon I'm going to get out my finer pencil and show you some quite fine work. I'd like to just get the ear blocked in and the position of the skull. Lovely turning of the head again, the following of that form around the skull, and even the eyebrows follow the form there. Right. Just a little bit of nose seen there. Or shortened or turned away from us. Right. To tone under the chin because that's turned away from the light. I'm not copying the light, but I use light and shade. I don't think there's anything wrong with the fact that we do see with the help of light and shade. We don't see very well in the dark at night. And uh, I don't have a problem with using light to help me to see form. But quite often I will search into the shadows to find the form. I don't just copy the lights and shades. And that is a big difference. So a lot of people are frightened to use light and shade because they feel that they will end up just copying rather than thinking for themselves. Okay, so we're getting a fairly good block in there. Quite often they get a little bit of smudge around the paper. That's where your putty rubber is so good and you can just clean things up a little bit. Never be without them. They can just you can easily throw them out if they uh, get grubby. Don't keep on with them and don't use the whole rubber. Just break off the little piece that you want to use for the particular job. Throw it away at the end of it. So, uh, there we are. I've cleaned that up a lot. And also I can use it to find my lights. Quite often you'll lose some of those lights and you need to actually restore them with the putty rubber there. Now I'm actually going to get out my finer pencil now. I'm actually going to have, you can put a piece of paper under your um, work if you like to, it keeps it a bit cleaner. But quite often I just put my hand, which does just as well. Okay, now I'm changed the hold on the pencil. From working as you saw before, like that, which was working almost with the back of my hand, you can see it's got rather grubby, the back of my hand against the paper. I'm now going to change it more as if I was writing, but just be careful again that you don't get too detailed with this technique because it allows you to make shorter strokes, smaller strokes, as you can see, and it allows you to be more analytical. But at the same time, you've got to watch, this is the dangerous time because this is a time you can let the details take over from the rest of the work. Now I do rather like that lovely little dark that's under there and I might even again come back with the rubber and just grab that little bit of light on the tummy there. So that's where your rubber, see I've just found his navel. Um, you can just do that so beautifully with the putty rubber. Okay now this lovely piece of turning perspective there and I'm not frightened to go quite dark. See this is a 2B pencil but it's amazing how dark that can go there and really give you that lovely that line through there is beautiful there. Now there's actually a little piece of the jeans that is tucked away under there. And that, and that really, that little roll of flesh is really like a miniature piece of drapery fold. So you can actually model that bit of flesh. Now in your first blocking with the graphite, it might have been a little bit loose and free and you mightn't have analysed that. So you might want to come back and say, ah, hold on folks, there's just a little more I'd like to tell you about that roll of flesh. It's just doing a little differently to what I first thought. Um, you can use a line on the contour, but be careful that that line doesn't become too hard. I might build it up with several lines, like so. 
And then I might find that there's a piece of form coming from right round the back, like, oh, isn't that lovely? So I might actually soften that, or even sometimes use a rubber and break the line like that, see? Now that allows your paper to integrate with your drawing and allows one form to come in front of another. So your rubber is a very, very useful piece of equipment, okay? Now, don't throw it away. Okay, there's a lovely bit where the jeans, the thickness of the jeans, isn't that lovely? Where it actually goes around the back of the body. I mean, that's, that's, that's telling you a lot about the thickness of the material. And, uh, you know, I, I love this sort of analysis. I find it delightful. I get a great thrill out of it. Um, I do a lot of drawing on, of people around in public situations, on trains and buses at concerts. I carry a sketchbook with me always. And I think that's the best way to really get your practice in. Okay, now that's, that's coming up beautifully there now, okay. Uh, still a few more folds are going around the back. I'm probably getting in the way of the camera there, but just trying to show that there's some lovely little overlapping folds there, little flicky ones that go around the back there. So, just give me use the rubber there, okay. Oh, isn't that lovely? Look at those radiating ellipses. They're just marvellous, the way they tuck around under his buttocks there and really help to give you and describe that, that form of that leg there. So that's wonderful. So I'll we'll just emphasise that a little bit there. Oh, and then we'll, that'll tuck right up there. So at this stage, you can actually take pieces like this and actually work with them because you know where you're going. If you feel you're losing the plot, just come back and look at the overall. Now, you might wonder why I've started over this side of the drawing instead of on that side. Well, I'm right-handed, and it's a bit better if I start on that side. I won't get it so grubby. I can work that way. So it's just a bit of logic there. Um, but I'm still keeping a very good overview on the whole thing. I think I can sharpen that line there because that's a pretty sharp line. That's the near part. That's where the bone on the knee is really going to push out there. So I'm going to hit that line pretty hard. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to soften the far side of it because lines have two edges and you can sharpen the near side of a line and soften the back side of it. See? Okay. Now that line now is belonging to the background instead of the foreground. Okay. That's doing wonders there. Okay, now out of that comes this lovely fold here. Oh, that's a beauty there. Okay, so we'll, again we'll sharpen that. And again we'll soften just a whisker. We'll add a few lines to the back side, right? Okay, so now it's coming forward beautifully there. Very, very simple. Now this is very important where this fold leaves the knee. You see, it's coming down so beautifully there. And just sharpening up and coming over there. Right, okay, right over to there. And at this point, we can just sharpen up again underneath there and really push that tone under. So quite a lot of the drawing is done by pushing tones behind things to bring things forward. So you're pushing darks in so that the lights will show up and that will help your volume, okay? Right, so there we are. Again, I'll just strengthen this a little bit because it's a pretty important near form there. And if we don't strengthen that up, we're not going to have that near form coming forward there. I might actually get back onto my soft pencil there and just give a little bit of attention to the planes of the foot there, okay? Because we need to just chisel those a little bit and get just the sense that it's a wedge-shaped form. And the, the toes, wedge-shaped, they've got some lovely planes on them, aren't they? Lovely. You almost make a study of that foot just by itself there. Okay, so, and there's a little, little bit of lovely cast shadow and a sense of the ellipse there, of the ankle, because it is an ellipse, isn't it? And then we just bring that, and again, we will watch very carefully where the line of the underside of the foot hits the ground, because, you know, you can do wonders with that by just touching the tone very carefully underneath the foot there. And don't forget your toes are mini ellipses. Each one is like a lovely sausage, isn't it? Little sausages coming out and tucking under other little sausages. And they're not all repeats of each other. Some toes are longer than others, and some tuck under others, and some have little buckles on the top of them. They're delightful. So, you know, you really, you've got to love what you do, you know. I mean, I know it sounds funny loving someone's toes, but yeah, you've got to. Otherwise, you won't tell anybody anything about them. If you're going to do something with a drawing, and make it live, you've got to love it. Because if you don't love it, no one else is going to love your drawing. Okay, now we'll just put a little bit more form onto there, just a tiny bit, because that drapery isn't just a hard board there. And in fact, there's another little bit that just slips up inside there. So just giving that a little bit of softness and movement there. 
and just a little bit, a couple of those folds. Here again, your 6B pencil will do it a lot better than tons and tons of little bits of shading. So you only use the fine shading when it needs to give you something very specific. Now, I'm actually going to use a rubber there and just lick that little, ah, see that made a difference? Just that little fold as it comes over the knee. Now that knee is very important because it's one of the nearest things to the spectator. And if we don't get that knee with the right amount of volume, it's going to really kill the rest of the drawing. I'm going to actually put a bit of tone under there because I'm going to turn the underside of that leg a little more. It just wasn't to me quite strong enough in the attempt to get the ellipsis. See, that's much better. See, that's really getting some strength now. Okay, now here we're going to tuck that around and tuck that back. And I'm actually going to put some tone over the space between the legs. We don't need that to be so strong. And it will be much better if we don't make the darks on that far leg too strong. So we're going to really, what I used to call soft pedal, I think it probably comes from bicycle language, but <laughs> we'll just really be very gentle and soft pedal on that, that distance there and we just really, just hardly touch that because we want to keep a space between the front and the back of our drawing because we're working on a flat bit of paper. And if we make things in the distance as dark and as strong as things in the front, we won't get any distance. Just remember with drawing, it's contrast that comes forward. Now say that again, contrast comes forward, right? So that if we keep our contrast in the front of a drawing, we will get form. And we'll keep less contrast in the back of the drawing. So we just keep that pretty delicate. Okay, we make sure that our hand, simple planes on the hand, Right, working very nicely there. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? Again, the tone inside the fingers and a beautiful design, almost radiating those fingers. It's beautiful there. And uh, that will help us a lot there. See, that's lovely. And again, we might use our fine pencil. And see, they're great, these pencils. You don't have to sharpen them. And um, I've given away wooden pencils that I have to sharpen. I can't have the patience with them. I want something that's handy and available. So they're great. Okay, so there we are. There's a lovely little bit of drawing on that thumb. Again, it's a series of lovely ellipses. Watch the thumb. Nails are great because they'll tell you whether the finger is turned away from you or turned towards you. A lot of people don't give enough attention to fingernails and which way they're facing. Oh, that's lovely. So again, I don't want to make too much detail. Now, if sometimes when you're drawing something like this, a finger or hand, because of the nature of it, it becomes in itself, you start to concentrate on it, you might start to get a bit fiddly with it. So if when you finish it all, it looks a little bit too detailed, you just get your rubber and you just press lightly on it and just lift off some of those details a bit, just knock it back a little bit. So that's where the rubber can be so useful. Now, you need to assess what you've done and say, well, okay, it might be the right, the right information, but it might be shouting too much. It might be no, just hitting too much. Oh, look, that arm is lovely. Look at those lovely overlapping lines. Each one of those overlapping contour lines tells us something about the anatomy there of the body. So, again, <laughs> sorry. Again, just very softly using that. Oh, that's beautiful. There's a lovely, I think it's uh, in that slightly pronated position. There's a lovely vein there. Might just pick that up there. Lovely little rhythm through there. You can learn such a lot by looking at other masters' works too. And I mentioned Michelangelo. Have a look at Ivor Heald, people like that. Lightest light and the darkest dark are never on the edge of a rounded object. And so that will, if you keep that in mind, it will help you a lot with your form. Okay, so there's a lovely piece of foreshortening there. Again, I'll just put my hand under that just to keep that a little bit clean. And I'll just, just redraw that. Oh, that's lovely. I'm bringing that up. Here's that little bit of the elbow joint there. And we might actually use a tiny little bit of cross hatching there, just gently again cuddling that form and tucking that right under that other arm. I mean, that, that's really quite wonderful. The way that arm goes over the other one, I think it's just absolutely magnificent piece of drawing there. And so that cast shadow even from the other arm is helping to convey that sense of volume. Isn't that beautiful? And then the little bit of leg that comes in front of the lot. So one in front of the other there is, is so important. Look at the lovely drawing under there and it comes down that and then that picks up under that lovely little overlap at the wrist and that again is beautiful there. And then that's coming down and tucking right under and then the thumb coming out of that. Okay, and then that's through there, that's beautiful. So just, now, again, if that's too hard, just 
lift it a bit with your rubber. I think we can get away with it. I think we'll get away with it by strengthening this. I'll try this. I think, it, I, think I have hit the details a bit there, but let's not weaken that. Let's actually strengthen this. Quite often that's not a bad way to go. So contrast come forward. Let's just look and see what our rubber can do. And we'll just bring, brill that up. That's better. And I'll just put a few, even though I did rub it, I just want to put a few broad lines just to help me feel that form there. Okay. Again, I'll bring this now forward to there. And I think if I strengthen this a bit, let's try here. So you need to come back, now that you know more what you're doing, and strengthen that, really darken that, almost dig into the paper, and really darken that there. See now that's, see that? That's really helping the strength of that a bit there. Watch how delicately that comes up there, and comes right up there onto there. That's lovely there. D darker under the armpit there, and through there. Just need to strengthen those a little bit there. So that's working quite well. See the strength that's giving? Now where the deltoid comes over, this just comes in front there. That's about the biceps there. So that's just coming in there. You need to know what you're drawing. It is important that you study anatomy and understand the surface anatomy, what the muscles are doing, what their origin and insertion is, and what they do for the body, because the body is a most wonderful piece of engineering. And every part does something to some other part. And you need to understand that before you start drawing, or along with learning to draw you. It's all part of it. Okay, now see how I'm actually just using my shading to just cuddle the form a little bit? Okay. See how those slightly curved strokes, see how they help that piece of volume a lot there? I nicked that from Michelangelo. Maybe he didn't mind. Okay, see that? Now see how that's helping you a lot there, see? That's great. Uh, no, you could go on doing a little more to it, but I think that will give you a fairly good idea. We might put a little tone just under where he's sitting, because otherwise he looks to be sitting in the middle of nowhere. Okay. Oh, you can even carry that through and put a little shadow under his foot, give a little bit of strength to it there. So that helps a lot. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Just as a little backup, this is the sort of thing that I do all day, every day, whenever I'm out with my sketchbook. Here is just somebody on the train, a delightful character. Here's another delightful character I caught the other day and he happened to be still sitting there. We got to the next station and I did two other views of his head. You can see the detail that I was able to get into that face. I don't think he was aware that I was drawing him. And you need to do this. I fill one of these sketchbooks every month or so and that's the sort of practice you need to have. Now just a little bit of revision here on this chart you can see there how a cube constructed just out of line can be given a great deal more emphasis with the shading technique that has, that has been used there. Simple diagonal shading in different directions that helps to build up tone. Here is another odd shape form where the tones are logically going from light round to dark and right round. Here is a cylinder. I've actually made a dimple in the cylinder. You can do lots of things like that just with shading as you can see there. If you mix up your tones like this one, that is wrong. And that will not give you form. You've got dark on the top, dark on the side, light underneath. You don't know where you're going because there is no logic to your tone. You need to do some practice just drawing balls, shading them up against dark surfaces, against mid-tone surfaces, and against light surfaces. Each time trying to get volume, and remember, the darkest dark and the lightest light are not on the edge of a rounded object. Here you can apply that now to more complex forms like onions and apples, and you can start to find planes in rounded surfaces because quite often they do have planes, not with sharp edges, but implied planes. So I hope that's been a help to you. You need lots of practice and lots of patience. Thank you.